I'm Kendra Little from Redgate Software, and I'm gonna show you how you can use SQL Doc to automate your database documentation with our SQL Change Automation tool. Now, I'm a weirdo, I do enjoy working on documentation, but I enjoy figuring out big concepts and working on them. I do not enjoy documenting tiny little details because it's really easy to have typos when it comes to tiny little details and also things change fast. So if I'm doing something like documenting a script, like what is the script of this table right now and what stored procedures reference this table, what views reference this table, I do not wanna do that manually at all. I wanna automate as much database documentation as possible. And I'm gonna show you how you can automate that using SQL change automation by hooking into SQL doc with our PowerShell commandlets. I am gonna show you this demo all in VS Code, which I like simply as an interface to show you a PowerShell script and to be able to run it. I have set up my PowerShell script to point to my Northwind project. And I might not you know, need to point this at the project file itself. Right now in this project, I've been committing things locally. I haven't been pushing them to another repo. I am using Git. I could of course build this documentation off of my centralized repo instead of building it against my local SQL project file. But to keep things simple for the demo, I'm keeping everything on one instance and I'm doing it this way. I've specified a version number here because I am gonna run a build and it's nice to be able to increment that with a number. I am saying when I output my documentation, I want to output that to a folder locally. Of course, I probably wouldn't be doing this locally. I would be doing it to a share in the real world, but I wanna put it in a dbdocs folder. I do need to specify a build SQL server because as we're gonna see, a build is invoked as part of this process. So let's go ahead and get this script executing and we'll look through it as it runs. The first step is to invoke the database build and we're saying, okay, we need to validate our project. So we're invoking the build. The build will say, hey, can I deploy the code you have for this project from scratch? Does it all work? Then we pass our validated project in and we say, hey, we want new database documentation for this. We do need to provide a database server here. It is going to, once again, to do the documentation, it is gonna create a database related to building that documentation as well. So if you do add this into your build process, it is gonna add some additional time to your little build process there. So depending on what that timing is and how frequently you're running your build, you may or may not want to do this in every single build that you run. I am specifying that I want this to run not against local DB, but against my dev server, because for example, I have a migration script that uses an online index operation. It needs to run my migration scripts and to use with online equals on, I've got to have SQL Server Enterprise Edition, or another edition that has the same features like developer edition, which is what mine is. It's not going to work against local DB. My uh, automation here is actually already completed before I've finished explaining it. One thing to know, when I did the export, I specified out output format as zip. And that's because I want to be able to quickly unzip the output from this and show it to you. So I'm going to extract all on this folder that was just created here. And there's more things in here than just my documentation. I can go in here, I can see, hey, there's other folders in here, but what I want is the docs folder. When I go into the docs folder, I have a few files. I'm gonna open up main.html, and that will give me this exploratory view of the documentation of my database. So for example, the employees table. If we look at the employees table, we can see all of the uh, columns and properties of them. We can see our indexes, constraints, foreign keys. 
what the script looks like. And this is one of my favorite parts, who uses this table in this database. So we get lots and lots of information in that documentation. And we were able to not only generate it quickly, but also at the same time, do things like validate that the code behind that documentation can build from scratch. So very, very easy by hooking into the new database documentation PowerShell commandlet. We've got more documentation for that online and I'll link you to that in the notes for this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Kendra Little with Redgate Software.